I arrived at work, and Emily was up and ready for the day, and uh, went up to her, and I said, hi, and, and she said, I hurt. And I said, well, Emily, uh, do you need some medication? Well, one of the, I, I think it was the cook that was there at the time, she said, well, Emily refused her medications this morning. And I said, oh, okay. Hey, Emily, and, and I figured she's probably already forgotten that she refused her medication, so I said, now, Emma Lou, you know, I'll bet maybe some, there'd be some kind of a medication that might help you feel a little bit better. Uh, would you be willing to try some? Well, all right. So I wheeled her down the hallway and found a charged nurse, and, and uh, the, the nurse knew she had refused the medications earlier. It was kind of exasperated, but she produced some more medic meds for Emma Lou, and, uh, you know, so we spoon fed her several of them down. And uh, suddenly she made in another announcement. She said, well, I'm hungry. I said, okay, well, let's go down and see what they might be able to cook up for you for, uh, in the kitchen. So there was the cook again, and I said, hey, Emma Lou's hungry. And the cook said, well, she refused her breakfast this morning. I said, well, do you think you could produce something for her? Because <laughs> she's hungry now. And so, she's, so the cook said, Emma Lou, or, uh, what would you like for breakfast? Emily said, I'd like a pancake. All right, Emily, I'll produce some pancakes here in just a jiffy. So I brought Emily into my office um, to wait for the pancakes and help pass the time. And Emily still wasn't feeling very well. She was still hurting a little bit, and the meds hadn't taken effect yet. And so I thought, well, what can we do? Well, I had learned by then that Emily was a musical dictionary. She grew up with a Gold Branson player piano in her household. And she knew all these old tunes. In fact, one of them, um, actually one of them is my, my uh, cell phone ringtone. And, and, and it's, on the, uh, it's at the end of the first CD that I produced called The Person in the Picture Ain't Me. I heard her sing this song. Actually, this is how I heard, first heard it. It was like this. I had a dream, dear. You had one, too. Mine is the best dream, cause it's of you. Come, sweetheart, tell me, now is the time. You tell me your dream and I'll tell you mine. By the way, my kids have asked me repeatedly to take that off my ringtone. And I said, never, never, it's staying there forever. So anyway, I thought, I've never heard that song, but it was so sweet. When I first heard it, it was just precious. She just burst out singing that song in the middle of one of my, like a little coffee clash that we had. So I thought, oh, well, that is the most precious song. Um, and I, I looked it up and I found out that this song was written in 1899 and it goes like this, it goes. I had a dream, dear, you had one too. Mine is the best dream, cause it's of you. Come, sweetheart, tell me, now is the time. You tell me your dream, and I'll tell you mine. Then we're singing, as you see, school days, school days, dear old golden rule. You can sing with me, taught to the tune of a hickory stick. You were my queen in calico. I was your bashful barefoot foe. When you rode on my slate, I love you so. When we were a couple of kids. And she had all kinds of songs. Let me call you sweetheart. Jesus loves me. She also knew Psalm 23 by heart. And, uh, and then she also had this one that goes, Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a handout to revive us again. Oh, that one has a whole bunch of verses I'd never heard. It was very funny. And, uh, and then she also had, Nobody likes me, everybody hates me. I'm going out and eat worms. Big ones, fat ones ones, whatever one. Oh, how they wiggle and squirm. She sang that, and I thought that was kind of her theme song, really. <laughs> well, <clears throat> finally,
finally, the cook comes into our office with the pancakes. So <laughs> I was able to assist Emily with her pancakes, and she had the clothing protector on. <clears throat> And uh, so there I am assisting her with one bite after another and the pancake and the syrup is kind of kind of dribbling down her chin and it's, you know, it's the <coughs> typical kind of disgusting sight that makes people not want to, makes visitors really not want to eat in a nursing home if you don't like seeing drool and stuff. And, but after, after about 10 minutes of this, suddenly she made an announcement. She said, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> And you know, it was mutual because I was having the time of my life too. And I thought, you know, if I had a choice between standing on the top of Mount Everest and having no friends in the whole world or sitting in an office with an elderly person who was a very close friend of mine helping her eat her pancake and having that joyous moment of love and belonging, I would choose that any day. And uh, not that I wouldn't mind being on Mount Everest, but anyway, <laughs> just saw someone got me there. I don't want to climb it. <clears throat> For her, love and belonging was foundational, and that's why she wanted to die when it wasn't there. my 